Hi one and all and welcome to today's video on further mathematics. Yes, further mathematics and this is the start of a new course. I'm Afs Guru, Darren. Uh, hopefully you've uh, already been watching some of my videos before, but if not and you're new, are welcome. Uh, do me a favour before you only go further and we are going to be classifying data. If you can, click like and subscribe on my channel, it would be greatly appreciated. And the best way to do that is click that doohickey over there on the corner. One person, that is just me. That is a little me trying to do a fabulously big job by recording all of these courses. Um, and if you can click that button, greatly appreciated. But let's get started. What on earth are we going to do in this lesson here today? Well, as the title says, we are going to classify data. Yes. What does that actually mean? Well, we're going to hopefully know the difference between data and variables and know the different types of variables on that. I'm going to talk about categorical variables. I'm going to talk about numerical variables and the sub bits in between them. And I'm going to look at how we can compare numerical and categorical variables. If that's the video you're looking to see, well, you found the right place. Now, I normally start all of my videos with a bit of a recap, but there is no recap. This is the very first video in a series on further mathematics. Um, so basically, we're going to start with the core data section, we're going to move on to the financial section, and there are all of those individual modules. Now, I'm going to record all of the modules. Uh, if you're doing a module that I haven't quite recorded yet, then bear with me, I will try and do them as quickly as I possibly can. The one thing to know about further maths is that it's very language based. Um, it's great, it's easy, it's very prescribed. You do this, you follow by this, you do this, you do this. Even when you write a report, even when you write something specific to answer a question, generally speaking, you can scaffold your answer. You can almost cut it out and just change the words in certain places, maybe change a percentage or two. On the whole, it's very much the same. So this is a great course, but you're still going to have to do working out the numbers. Now, I love a good de uh, definition, don't you? And the first definition I want to look up is what is data? Or if we're in for the United Kingdom, what is data? Uh, other than a very awesome character from Star Trek The Next Generation. And if I'm not showing my age and my little bit of geekiness, I never will there. Well, I loaded up the dictionary. My mum always said to me, load up the dictionary, Darren, and if you don't understand a word, it will explain it to me. And there it was. It's a noun. And it says facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. Okie dokie, what does that mean? Um, the quantities, uh, characters or symbols on which operations are performed by a computer, which may be stored or transmitted in the form of electrical signals and recorded on magnetic... <laughs> Okie dokie, I think I'm going to go back to that first one. I think in this situation here, that's probably the useful one for me. Facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. So data is basically stuff that we can collect. And wouldn't it be great if we had an example with a table in it? And we do. Now, this table is from the Cambridge uh, Further Mathematics ten textbook, and it's great. I have to say, the best textbook I am aware of using for, for a long, long time. And what can we see? Well, we can see that there are heights and weights and ages and sex. <laughs> Giggle. Uh, there is fitness. Oh, it's been given a high, medium, a low, but a number. And a pulse rate. Some of these are numbers. You notice how some of these have numerical values and other than seem to have these M's and F's. Numerical and, oh, what could that other one be? Oh, I don't know, categorical perhaps. Okay, now some of our numbers, some of our data we collect will have numbers. Others will seem to have letters. Others will have words. Uh, I don't know, maybe colors. Think about eye colors. Uh, think about um, the states of Victoria that you live in or the counties in the United Kingdom, for example. All of this is data. And then we're going to move on to what is a variable. Or oh, again, don't you just love a good definition? The problem is when I put this into dictionary, or in fact, Google, it came up with a lot of stuff. Not consistent or not having a fixed pattern, liable to change. Of wind. Oh, excuse me. I didn't think you could smell it from there. Holding on. Uh, tending to change directions. Mathematics. Oh, oh, there we go. After all of this stuff, this is why people don't use dictionaries. Way too much stuff. Mathematics. Able to assume different mathematical values. All right, so a variable is actually something that can take different mathematical variables. I think for further maths, what we're going to say is what it says here. Let's say a variable is a quality or quantity about which we record information. And so, looking back at that table, what are our variables? 
Well, I've already said there were six of them. There are heights, there are weights, there are ages, there are sex, <laughs> there are fitnesses, and there are pulse rates. All different information, all variables that we might need to know about. Now, I may have been stopped at the street and someone said to me, ah, excuse me, sir, we're doing a survey. We need to know the fairest information. This will help us plan for our local community. Maybe they're building a leisure center and they're trying to find out you know, the general demographic, the ages and the sex and the weights and heights of people who would actually be joining. You don't know. Now, as I say to you over and over again, I believe there's a guy over here in Australia called Barry, whose sole job is to sit in an office and make things really complicated. Well, in the United Kingdom, the good news is I'm pretty sure we took Barry out and shot him twice because he tried to get away. But over here in Australia, he's going strong. And so much of what we learn in mathematics, we have to try and sort of beat Barry to it. Now, I use a, tend to use a hashtag saying no more Barry um, because we're trying to get rid of this idea that maths is hard. It really isn't. Now, there are two types of variables or two types of data out there that we tend to be able to categorize things into. One of them is numerical and one of them is categorical. We're going to start with numerical first. Now, why are we going to start with numerical? Because it's actually the easiest one to deal with. Now, here's this word numerical. And it just so happens if you look at the first three letters, it's num, like numbaz. Yes, I am a rapper because I'm using numbaz rather than numbers. Uh, please forgive me for this. Uh, it's a little bit lonely being a math teacher. So numerical data deals with numbers. It is numbers that can be counted or measured. So, you know, the number of people in the classroom, that type of stuff, the number of TV sets, number of socks I might be wearing, number of feet I might have. I know, we've all got two, but that's a whole new discussion. So, that's awesome. Yep, it is stuff that can be counted. So, numerical stuff that can be counted or measured. We'll come back to that in a moment. Some of the examples I just gave, number of feet that I have. Well, how many feet do you have? Two, hopefully, fingers crossed. If you've got three, congratulations. Many years ago, you'd been put in a circus. Whole new discussion. How many people are there currently in your classroom? If you are there in a classroom, how many people are in your house at this moment in time? All of these numbers are actually discrete numerical variables. Why is it discrete? Well, discrete means they can take whole number values only. Yeah, it's not like I'm going to have 3.4 feet. It's not like there's going to be 8.7 people in a classroom. Yes, it would be a bit weird if there was a 0.7 of a person. That would basically be everything except maybe their head and an arm. That would be weird. If there was somebody in my classroom that was basically without their head or an arm, mm, yeah. Now, what you notice is, for me to be able to decide whether data is numerical uh, and, in fact, discrete, I tend to ask myself the question, can it have decimals? Would it make sense to have a decimal value? So, examples we include here, great photos, great pictures, number of people in the classroom, size of shoes, uh, TV sets in the house. And you're going to go, if you were quick there, hold on a moment, size of shoes, you said it can't have a decimal value. Well, for some weird reason over here in Australia and in the United Kingdom, we choose half sizes. I don't actually know. Six and a half shoe size. Eight point five as a shoe size. Why? Why would we do that? Well, you're going to turn around and say, well, that can't be numerically discrete data. And I'm going to say to you, actually, yes, it can. We've chosen 0.5 to mean something, but it's actually not mathematical. I cannot walk into my local shoe store and say, can I have a 7.369 shoe, please? So again, did you see what I did there? 7.369 shoe, it doesn't make any sense. We've chosen shoe sizes actually to have this 0.5, but realistically speaking, it is discrete data. Then we move on to continuous numerical variables and you're gonna say, well, hold on a moment, I know this then. And of course you do. If we have discrete can take whole numbers only, then continuous numerical variables can actually take decimal values. Yes, uh, these are things that can be measured again, but with decimal values. Um, let's think about this. Uh, time can be measured with decimal values. I can have 3.6 seconds. Distance, I can have a distance measured in decimal values. I can have weight, I can have height, all of these measured in decimal values. Now, to be honest with you, running a race, 
would actually make no sense whatsoever to measure all the competitors' times in seconds. Usain Bolt, he is the man, and if we look up online the information about him, then it says his 100 meters personal best is a world record at 9.58 seconds. Now again, we didn't measure him as 9 seconds. If you looked at everybody who uh, crossed the finish line, I bet they're around 9, 10 seconds. How would we differentiate with them if we didn't have those decimal points? 9.58. Do you think that was his actual time? I reckon he probably was 9.581. Or he could have been 9.5813. All we do is we measure and cut the time off in a way that, or, or to a uh, sort of number of decimal places that fits with us. So that was numerical data, numbers, stuff that can be counted or measured. And we've just said numerical can be split up into discrete or continuous. Then we go to the other one. Going back to that table, do you remember? Okay, so numerical, 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 although this one here actually could be categorical. Come back to that in a moment. But then we get this thing here with this M and F. So things that can fall into a category that doesn't have a numerical value, we call categorical values. Yay, this is so exciting. And categorical values may fall into two subcategories, nominal and ordinal. And I'm going to come to a nominal in just a moment. So examples of categorical data might include the colors of people's eyes, the states people live in, the gender that someone is, and gender I mean male or female. Now we cannot put those in order. Now, if I was to ask you who is more important, male or female, you undoubtedly will have some sort of opinion. We'll all get very excited about all of this. But actually, there is no known order of male or female. By saying male or female does not imply any order. What about the states in Victoria? I currently live in, uh, sorry, what about the states in Australia? I currently live in Victoria. Does that have an order of preference? Am I more by living in Victoria? If I was to put all of my states in order, would there be an automatic order? No. And likewise, with eye color, are blue-eyed people, like me, fabulously blue-eyed, uh, more important than brown-eyed people? No. So this data we call nominal. Right? So nominal categorical data cannot have an order. And so mm, let me think what would be out there that maybe have an order. And they actually said in that table earlier, it was fitness levels. Now, they gave fitness levels one, two, or three, but actually those numbers stood for low, medium, or high. Now, obviously, low is a word, medium is a word, and high is a word as well. And so we basically said, if it's not numerical, it's categorical. But I can look at these three words, and I know that there is an order associated with low, medium, and high. If I said I was high fitness level, then I know I'd be pretty fit. If I had a low fitness level, I'd be a couch potato watching rubbish on television and eating ice cream sandwiches. And that's now made me hungry. Ice cream sandwich. Yes, please, but not now. There's ordinal data. Now, how do we remember it's ordinal because there is an order to it? Order, ordinal. This is basically further maths. I hate to tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm done. First lesson already, lots of talking, no maths. Well, I mean, obviously, you can practice this. But it's just learning those key terms. Same as if you did legal studies or business management or anything out there. There are certain terms you've got to learn. Same with further. Load up your summary book. Do what you need to do. Um, it's awesome having you along. If you haven't already done so, can you do me a favor and subscribe? You'll be able to do that in a moment. Get out there and tell your friends that, yay, Maths Guru is now doing uh, further maths. And year seven and math methods, both year 11 and year 12, we're going to be your one-stop shop for all that you need to know. So subscribe by clicking that doohickey there. It's really, really good having you along. Thank you for taking the time. Hopefully it's been useful. I'll get better, I promise. Otherwise, there's a video loading for you over there of similar standard. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have an awesome day. Mask Guru, out.